Well, this is something I'd like to give a little, you know, make a little slide presentation or something probably at some point. But basically, I would like to talk about uh, uh, philosophy and art. So this is more on what is art and a comparison with philosophy. So I said that art is, at least we can start at, maybe this is too big of a superset, but things that go from mental, uh, that you convert, that go into art, come out material. Now there's other alternates, right? So we think of the word philosophy, is it an alternate or subcategory or what? Well, I think if we think of that, it's kind of uh, like philosophy takes something mental in and puts something mental out. So it's mental to mental now. So is that, can that be art? I mean, at first blush, uh, well, that's different than art because the material thing didn't come out. However, there's two things. One, the mind is material. So if you took something mental and created something material, it could be art, right? And if mental is material, that means it can be art, but then it's also material into material. So it is kind of confusing because they're at the same level. And then two, there's the potentiality. The philosophy itself is the kind of mental thing that leads, in my mind, to good art. So um, that would mean eventually something material comes from it. In a way, maybe you could judge something after the fact as good philosophy or not, depending on what it materially produces. Okay. So to me, you know, the word philosophy has a lot of senses, and, but, uh, and you can't really just find one that is correct, but one that does bind them, that's general enough, does bind them is, you know, philosophy is basically psychology from the inside, like how to do computer programming when it's neural programming, when it's wetware, not hardware and software, you know, so philosophy of something is always interested in abstractions because it's the most abstract way to, you know, uh, set up or range. Uh, your thoughts um, from an abstract point of view uh, where the bottom of this tree of abstraction is something material which again gives a material reality to philosophy and whether or not you can make a material reality for philosophy is sort of a fundamental thing about what you think about philosophy about what, what I think of your philosophy and so forth so that's just a brief uh, overview of the issue um, I think that um, uh, philosophy is the kind of endeavor where you would draw that cycle of uh, mental into art, into material, into experience, into mental, and so forth. That loop, that's philosophy. So in a way, I guess I'm saying philosophy is a bigger uh, a sphere, but it's kind of like at the bottom of materiality you get mass and energy and things like this and they can all transform into each other there's different kinds of, of bosons and you know energy can transform so your reductionism turns into a transformationism you know it's sort of the same thing um you know philosophy does come out as sort of a, a, a superset from the point of view of well i can think about art you know, you can transform ideas of art into philosophy and think about philosophy and it's like you're thinking about art. But you can do the other thing too. You can take philosophy and transform it into art and think about it that way as art. Think about the philosophy as art. So, uh, And I think, again, it's a cycle. So, um, I don't know, you know, maybe I, if you remember my cycle that I just mentioned, you know, maybe philosophy is that whole picture or in the center. So in a way, I think philosophy is a superset and yet to me, because the action is portrayed or framed as art of some degree of quality, of some degree of intentionality, sort of judged by its intentionality, um, art-wise anyway. Uh, philosophy has a component that is inherently artistic for me. All right.